we don't just drill teeth, although sometimes we do. We don't just educate the next generation of dentists, although we're doing that quite well. We're number two in the world. This was something quite different. So the main idea that we've been exploring with this collaboration is really the difference between hearing and listening. I'm very interested in the difference that exploring listening can make to the processes of research, um, working together as part of a team. Tabata's influence was for us to look at uh, science in a different way and really to, to keep your mind open for the unusual. And that's really important in science because uh, we only make discoveries by looking at the unusual, by finding things that we didn't expect. And I think uh, working with an artist brings that home again, that we should be taking a step back and then look at our work in a different light. What we wanted to achieve was to make a learning tool that we can use um, for our students to really think about what it's like to have a disability um, and try and access uh, NHS services. There are a lot of barriers to disabled people uh, coming to hospital and although we can teach these skills and our current students are very good at acquiring knowledge um, it can be quite difficult to teach the more soft skills. This was a project that Brian wants to do for a long time and his focus was telling the story of disabled patients so my thing was doing that as truthfully as honestly as possible. There was a, a study to do with the 360 VR experience that was specifically about cerebral palsy but it immediately became apparent to me and I'm sure most of the audience that an opportunity to learn as a student where you're less uh, conscious about upsetting or offending patients based on your ignorance as a, as a human being. That will always be useful because you can learn, immerse yourself in an experience but feel like there's less risk towards the actual patient. And I think that is something that transcends specific diseases and experiences um, and will hopefully become quite ubiquitous in medical education. The ideas that we were exploring in this collaboration is some of the inequalities that exist within the dental-patient relationship and how we might represent those and make them visible and evident. I think there's lots of benefits of an opportunity like this. So um, the chance to work with somebody that I've not worked with before and wouldn't usually get the opportunity to work with. The chance to, to look at theories that I hadn't come across. The, the chance to, as I say, think in different ways and, and draw on concepts that, that hadn't occurred to me before. It was really exciting to do. It's been fun as well as a learning opportunity, I think. So at the start of it, we were looking at how we can use spoken word, uh, which Hayden is very good at, uh, to be able to disseminate an idea to a larger popular audience. I can't think of a better term than a double-ended approach. I came into the project with no knowledge of stem cells and then how to then create a video based on that versus academics who are well-versed in stem cells. And then comparing that approach um, was really fascinating. Any means of communicating the work that you do to a different audience makes you think about the, the work that you've done in a different way. And that's important because it makes the researcher think differently and, and I think brings a different kind of element to their, the way they're going to approach the work in future. The ideas we were exploring in this collaboration were really to do with um, the fact that sometimes the stuff of every day, the things we sense like taste and hearing, um, can get forgotten when we treat patients with more severe diseases like cancer or dementia. The organs that we study, so the salivary glands and the ear, and like the eye or the skin, um, they are quite hidden and perhaps that hidden nature also influences the clinicians in terms of you know, not quite addressing these as often as they should. The benefits of an opportunity like this are wonderful because they give you an insight into a world that would otherwise be quite closed, especially to an artist. It's very interesting working with an artist because you start looking at things in a different light. So for example, we would sort of take out our sort of mundane staining bottles and Emma would be very enthusiastic about sort of how interesting they looked. So you start to sort of realise that many things that we take for granted are actually uh, very unusual and have interesting viewpoints. 
This collaboration changed my approach to work in two major ways. In the clinical side where I could improve my communication skills and also in a research side I could visualise my research in a different perspective. We have the opportunity now that we've, we've gone through, if you like, the first stage of this kind of working um, jointly with, with artists to think more broadly about how we could introduce this more generally. Um, and as a, f a formal means of communicating what we do um, to a wider audience. These days, the challenges that we all face are not going to be solved with siloed thinking. So we have a group of very talented researchers in basic clinical and translational areas. To therefore expose them to totally different ways of thinking that was the whole point of the project and I think that the feedback that we've had to date suggests that both the artists and the researchers have all benefited from those sort of cross-disciplinary ways of thinking and approaching.